Do you want to know how wealthy people organize their finances? Here's a hint. They don't just keep all their cash in one bank account. I'll show you. What wealthy people do is they have designated money for spending. They have designated money to be invested. And they have designated money to be saved for an emergency. They know what every dollar they earn is going to do. They build a system. I'm working to earn this amount of money. And then out of this amount of money, some of it is going to be spent. Some of it is going to be invested. Some of it is going to be saved. And the reason why is because they have built a financial plan. They've already built the financial models to know if I invest $1,000 a month or $500 a month or whatever the amount of money is, I'm going to be able to hit my financial goals. But in order to get there, you have to start by at least organizing your money. And the simplest thing you can do to do this is you got to just figure out where your money is going. And this one is a little bit difficult, but it is so necessary for every single person. You have to track your money. In business, we say if you cannot track it, you cannot optimize it. It's the exact same with your personal finances. So what I want you to do is take a piece of paper, take a Google sheet, I don't care. And you want to write down on the top how much money you're making. How much money did you make last month? I don't care if it's from your business, from your investments, your job. Write down where your money came from and write down how much money you made from your income, from your job, from your business, from your investments. Write that down at the top. Then below that, you want to write down your expenses and you want to spend a little bit of time doing this. This is going to take time. Take out your credit card statements, take out your debit card statements, take out your bank account statements and see where all of your money went and then categorize them by groceries, by your housing costs, by your vehicle costs, categorize them and write down every single expense. You need to know where every penny went. And then below that, write the other places where your money went. Did you invest any money? If so, how much and where? Did you save any money? If so, how much and where? Did you give any money to charity? If so, how much and where? Now when you do this, you're going to see a clear picture of how much money you're earning, how much money you're spending, how much money you're saving, how much money you're investing. Now, if you're not saving or investing any money, well, that's already a big flat red flag right there. And if your expenses are higher than your income, that's another huge red flag. And so now what you're going to see is where is your money going? And immediately, I don't have to tell you what to do here. You're going to immediately be able to make adjustments in your finances because your money is going to be staring right back at you and saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're spending too much money at restaurants. You're spending too much money on airline tickets. You're spending too much money on travel. And if you're not tracking your money, you are never going to have a chance to become wealthy because you can't even see where your money is going. So that's the first step is you got to track where your money is going. The second thing you want to do now is you have to open up at least three different bank accounts. And most banks are going to let you do this for free. If your bank is charging, you go out and find a new bank. You don't want to pay for your banking services. But you want to open three different bank accounts. And when you earn money, if you're getting paid a salary from your job or if your business is paying you a salary, this money needs to go into one checkings account. And then out of that checkings account, you want money to automatically be pulled out and put into your other two bank accounts. Because your bank account number one is your spending money. Bank account number two is going to be your investing money. And bank account number three needs to be your savings money. Now, the amount of money that you save is going to depend on where you are financially. I generally say somewhere between three to 12 months worth of expenses. You got to find the right number for you. I'm not a financial advisor. Everything that I say is for educational purposes only to so make sure you understand that. But generally, three to 12 months worth of expenses is going to be enough for people regardless of where you are in your life. So if you're 23 years old, you're just out of college, you don't got any financial liabilities, you don't got a lot of responsibilities, maybe you only need a few months worth of expenses saved up. If you're 45, you got kids, you got responsibilities, you got liabilities, maybe you need six, nine, or 12 months worth of expenses depending on your risk tolerance. So you got to work to build up the savings depending on where you are financially. Your second bank account, which is your investing money, this is where your wealth is built. And the thing that you want to understand about this is there are ways for you to automatically actually invest your money. And then there are places where you just want to keep this cash waiting for a good investment opportunity. And this is going to depend on you because I personally like both. I have a system where money is automatically invested. Every Wednesday, I have cash that's leaving my check-ins account that gets invested into the stock market. I'm investing into different asset classes like even physical gold every month. But let's talk about the stock market. Every Wednesday, cash is pulled out of my checkings account and it's automatically invested into the stock market, whether the market's up or down, it does not matter. But I also am putting money into my investment account, my 
bank account that's cash waiting to be invested, where I'm looking for a good investment opportunity. Now, this could be stocks, this could be real estate, this could be buying a business, this could be really anything. I'm just looking for a good investment opportunity because I am an investor. I like investing. This is something that I personally like doing, and I want to spend the time in that, and I also understand the risks. And so now you got to understand what type of investor are you. But the key is you have to separate the spending and the investing and the saving. And the reason why is because when you have all of your money in one bank account, it's very easy to just spend that money because most of us have this net zero mindset because we assume if I got $1,000 in my bank, I can spend $1,000. But to prevent that from happening is you want this money automatically put into your investing cash account and your savings account because now when you don't see that money in your spending account, you're not going to be able to spend it because there's no money there for you to spend. And this is going to make it a lot easier now for you to figure out what can you actually afford. Because when you are working to just spend money and then you invest whatever's left, you are never going to have a chance to become wealthy because you're prioritizing making everybody else rich. When you're working to spend money, when you're working to buy a nice car, when you're working to buy a big home, when you're working to buy the nice clothes, you're working to make everybody else rich. But when you're working to buy more investments, when you're working to buy more assets, now you are working to make yourself rich. But this requires you now to change the way that you organize your finances. And that's why at the very least, go out and create three different bank accounts. Now, a simple rule of thumb that you can follow is 75, 15, 10, which says for every dollar that you earn, 75 cents is the maximum that you can spend. 15 cents is the minimum that you're investing. 10 cents is the minimum that you're saving. And now many banks will allow you to build an automatic withdrawal and deposit into these bank accounts. So if you know that you're going to make $1,000 every two weeks, you can take $150 and put it into your investment account and put $100 into your savings account every two weeks. And you can automate this through your bank. That way now you don't accidentally spend your investment money on a brand new TV. That's the first thing. I'm gonna jump back into the video in just one second, but before we do, if you are an investor and you're looking for an easy and free way to stay up to date on what's happening in the top financial news from the economy to the housing market to the stock market to the crypto market to the global economy, then you have to check out Market Briefs. Market Briefs is my free financial newsletter that I created that will keep you up to date on what's happening in the financial news. You can read the newsletter in less than five minutes every morning. It's a fun and easy to read email and it's completely free. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I got the link to how you can join down in the description below. The next thing you want to do if you want to really organize your finances is you got to organize your investments. And that means now you got to figure out what is your investing strategy. Like what I was talking about just a couple minutes ago, when it comes to investing your money, you can be more of a passive investor or you can be more of an active investor or it could be a hybrid of both. I am a hybrid of both. I invest my money in five places. I invest my money into my own business, Briefs Media, along with other companies. I invest my money into physical real estate. I invest my money into the stock market. I invest my money into cryptocurrency. And I invest my money into physical gold. Now, I don't recommend what I do to anybody else, but this is my strategy. Some of these are passive. Some of these are active. Like my real estate investments are active. I have to go out and find rental properties. I have to go out and find good investment deals. And then I go out and I invest in it when I feel like it's a good price in a good area in a growing neighborhood. That's what I'm looking for. When it's the stock market, I have a passive strategy, but I also have an active strategy in the stock market as well. If I see a great investment opportunity in the stock market, maybe it's a great company that has just been hit hard by the economy or by something else going on in the market. Well, now I can go out and buy this company that I believe is a good investment and buy it. But beyond that, I have my passive strategy, which is every Wednesday, I have cash leaving my account and it's automatically being invested. And this is whether the market's up or whether the market's down. It does not matter. I'm always, no matter what, contributing to my investing. Now, the key here is you have to figure out what are you prioritizing? Are you going to prioritize your investing or are you going to prioritize your spending? Because most Americans, and I'm not saying this generally, I'm saying this statistically, most Americans prioritize their spending. Meaning, when something comes up in life, Let's just say your friends want to go on a vacation or somebody's having a baby or somebody's having a wedding. What are you going to do? Are you going to prioritize paying for that gift or paying for that event? Or are you going to prioritize investing that money first? And if you really want to become wealthy, you have to prioritize building your wealth first. 
which means sometimes you got to make some sacrifices and you got to figure out which sacrifices you're willing to make. Maybe you got to downsize your car. Maybe you got to downsize your home. Maybe you got to downsize how many times you're going to eat out a week. Maybe you're going to downsize your clothes. You got to downsize something in order to make the ability to keep investing your money. And as you're doing that, the next thing you want to do is work to earn more money. Now, the reason why you want to work to earn more money isn't so you can drive a faster car. It's so you can own more assets, which will buy you that faster car. That is the key. Because what wealthy people are doing is wealthy people are living off of their investments. They're not living off of the money they're working to earn. When you work hard to earn money and then you spend that hard-earned money, you are working hard to make everybody else rich. But when you work to earn money and then you take this hard-earned money and then you buy assets, you are working hard to make yourself rich. Now, these assets are going to be working to earn you more money. Because if you own cash flow producing assets like dividend paying stocks or rental properties. Now these assets are working hard to pay you. And if you can live off of this cash flow that your assets produce, now you are financially wealthy. Now the tough part is this is hard. This is difficult. This is going to require you to make some sacrifices because if you want to live off of your assets, it's going to take a lot of work. And this is why I call it a decade of sacrifice. It's going to take you a lot of time to see any real significant income from your cash flow producing assets. But if you keep putting money into these cash flow producing assets week after week, month after month, year after year, and you do this for a decade, after 10 years, I guarantee you're going to be able to have some significant income from your cash flow producing assets. But it's going to take you a decade. But if you can do that, now you have a whole new stream of income which can fund a big chunk of your lifestyle. But it requires you to start making that sacrifice today. Because what wealthy people are doing is, number one, they have organized their finances so every dollar that they earn has a job. Some of this money is going to be spent. Some of this money is going to be invested. Some of this money is going to be saved. The more money you put towards your investments, the wealthier you will become. Now, as you're investing your money, the second question is, how do you invest this money? Do you want to be more of an active investor or more of a passive investor? Then it's now, as you're investing your money, how can you use the income from your investments? Because true financial freedom comes from when your assets can pay for your lifestyle, but that's going to require you to put in that work now, to own the assets, to make the sacrifices, build the cash flow, and then start to live off the cash flow. And this is sacrifice after sacrifice. But if you can do this, now you're going to build that true financial wealth, that true financial freedom that most people only dream of. No one can perfectly time a recession, but there is one recession indicator which has warned investors of every recession coming for the last five decades. And right now, this recession indicator is flashing some big red warning signs, but most people are choosing to ignore it. This indicator is called the inverted yield curve.